Now the story of a family that suffered a devastating loss but still found a way to pay it forward. They did it through organ donation. The death of their son has now led to miracles for several other families. Family actually reached out to our Paula Tutman to share their story, hoping to inspire others to follow suit. Paula. Devin, I love that you said that. Miracles is absolutely the right word. The family originally got transported to Port Huron, McLaren, or I should say McLaren, Port Huron. Uh, Ashton had to be transported to Children's. The family just wants to say thank you because they said that staff was so amazing, so empathetic, and many of them were even very emotional during Ashton's honor walk. As 10-year-old Ashton Whitfield's gurney led the honor walk to harvest his organs, this cloud formation appeared above the hospital. His aunt snapped a picture and handed it to her sister as she said a final goodbye to her precious little boy. And in that moment, there was no doubt for his parents. They had made the right decision to donate his organs. You can't prepare yourself for moments like this. You can't, you can't prepare yourself for moments like this. Tuesday, June 27th, Ashley and her four children got stuck in construction on I-94 near Fredmore Highway. I had enough time to look in my rearview mirror and say, why is he not slowing down? The driver who plowed into Ashley's car was killed. She and three of her children were badly injured, but 10-year-old Ashton's injuries were incredibly severe. Bleeding profusely out of his mouth. Four days later, doctors told Ashley and her husband Milton there was nothing they could do to save Ashton. He wanted so badly to be a Marine. Um, I think that would be the best way to fulfill his dream of saving lives. In Ashton's case, he was able to donate heart valves, his liver, and kidneys. In addition to that, uh, through tissue donation, uh, you can heal up to 75 to as many as 125 different people. It did give a lot of peace um, just because he's able to save lives like he wanted to. Um, it's still hard. In communities of color, it's particularly poignant because uh, out of those 2,400 on the waiting list, a disproportionate amount are African American. It's gender, ethnicity, weight, antigens, all of these things that blood type, there are a, a lot of factors that go into making a great match. There is a small corner of Ashley and Milton's hearts that ache just a little bit less. He came home with straight A's. Um, he made captain of the safety patrol, which is very proud of. Um, anything that he put his mind to, he would study it and he would practice it and he would just keep trying until he achieved it. Um, he was always willing to help somebody. Yeah, and he did. He helped a lot of people. I, I want to go back to that ethnicity piece. It is key because as many matches as you have as possible, the more likely you are to have a successful donation. And so if more minorities actually were donors, more minorities would actually get that kind of help. By the way, if anybody wants to reach out, show some love or support to this family, uh, the Port Huron chapter of the NAACP is taking communications for them. And I just got emotional just now. Back to you, Deb. A lot of people do it, especially people who've had this experience of trying to overcome heartbreak by finding a way forward. Really a beautiful story. Yeah. All right, Paula.